Oh, we just got set up. We're out in layout blinds in the middle of this cornfield. Now we're out with ducks and bucks outfitters. Everyone's getting all the decoys set out. We've got the lay down blinds and we're hoping the weather's finally breaking. It's pretty cold, it's been pretty windy, but hopefully these ducks will come through. We should have a really good hunt. We're just getting our decoys moved now. We had a couple of groups come in. We got a couple out of there, but they're just coming in right over the top of us. So we moved them out just a little ways. We got a really windy day out here. It's cloudy, so hopefully this will help. We're gonna get back in the layout lines and see how it works. Well, we're getting ready to head back in. We're gonna probably grab something for lunch, but this, so far this morning, it's been pretty slow. We've had a lot of ducks coming through, and really, it's been a blast for me. I have been a long time since I've been out duck hunting, and we're really having a great time. There's tons of ducks here. In fact, yesterday, I've never seen such big groups coming in, so it makes it really exciting. We've got a great setup here. They're just they're flying around, they're just not coming in right now, so we've had a lot calmer day today. We're gonna head back in. Hopefully this afternoon, it'll all come together. I grew up hunting in central Minnesota and I got my start going duck hunting with my family. My mom, my dad, they'd take my brother and I and we had so much fun. But over the years, well it's something I kind of got away from and haven't had much of a chance to do it. We just got our blinds all set up and we we're actually switch sides from where we were yesterday. Out here found one of the wads. Now the first thing you'll notice, it looks totally different than what you're probably used to. Now this is actually a diamond cut wad and with this hex steel shot that we're using, we're using blind side three inch twos, well it really does help your performance. In fact, you get 25% better patterning in that kill zone. Now the other thing, with this hex shot, so you've got six sides if you can imagine that, all sorts of different cutting edges and it's going to help kill those ducks faster and make for more trauma. The other thing is it's got a really high packing density so in it it actually has 15% more shot. All those things combined well it's going to help kill more ducks and uh, out here I'm going to need every advantage I can get. This segment was brought to you by Sportsman's Alliance. Our heritage, our fight. Protecting hunting from coast to coast. Did you know that Ohio is home to the Sportsman's Alliance, which was created when animal rights activists tried to stop trapping within the state. The future of hunting depends on sportsmen sticking together regardless of what you do. Whether you're a deer hunter, duck hunter, fisherman, or you trap, anti-hunters love to divide sportsmen and try to ban the hunting of animals based on this method, such as with bait, when you're using dogs, or even archery and crossbows. Just another fun fact showing how sportsmen and women are helping make a difference. Missouri is an incredible place. And I was hoping, okay, if I get to go on a duck hunt, well, I definitely want to surround myself with people who know exactly what they're doing. And these guys definitely fit the bill. 
We were heading down to meet up with Ducks and Bucks Outfitters. They're just a great group of people, and I knew I was in good shape. Oh, we've got our blinds moved now. We did have sun out for a short time, but of course now the sun is gone. Now they said a lot of these ducks work a lot better in these fields when you've got a lot of sun, but it looks like we're not gonna have it. So we've got a GoPro set up right behind me. We've got the whole spread set out here. We're gonna probably have an east wind, so we should have everything set accordingly. But usually this time of year, while well, I'm out deer hunting or after something else, but I had a couple of days, came through Missouri. It is brutal, brutal cold, but I'm nice and warm. Gonna crawl in these blinds. Hopefully we have some ducks come through. Now tell me a little bit about these decoys that we're putting out. Well, this is really our first generation of, uh, we actually took a friend of mine's old field decoys mm -hmm. and we did, made them through our process and refinished them. I mean, it yeah. really does look amazing. We use UV paint where each species has UV because ducks see UV light. Mm -hmm. So each species has UV specific places that it shows up. We do that on each decoy. So they're all handmade, hand painted. So we try to make them as uh, lifelike as possible, and, and you know we believe it makes a difference. Someone got two with one shot. <laughs> One of the things that was definitely going to make this trip different is the people I was with. These guys were such a wonderful group of people. All right. There you go. Let's see. Someone's got to slice that yeah. up, mm -hmm. and we vote it. Justin. Melissa? Yeah. I think she should. See, and only two people get to eat tonight, me and someone else. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. You and Dave. You're in charge of, not, you're the vice president in charge of NBTV. Just you know, look at the dog looking at me. Yeah, she's all crazy. We were all having so much fun. We were laughing, joking around. Plus, they had an absolutely beautiful cabin for us to stay in. Now, this was an awesome setup. They had it just totally decked out, and we had some incredible meals in the evening. Now, my buddy, Mitch Kizar, who's my photographer, he's also a phenomenal cook. We got to duck on all throughout the day, and it really was just an awesome experience. What a nice way to end, huh? <laughs> And when you're out there duck hunting, it's not just the ducks coming in, but hearing everyone calling, seeing the sunrise in the morning, watching all the dogs work, it really does make for an incredible experience and something totally different than I was used to. Of course, I knew I used to love duck hunting, but it had just gotten to be a little too long since I had done it, so I was really excited to be back, and quickly I realized why I had missed it so much. This segment, Melissa was hunting with Flack Brothers of Ducks and Bucks Outfitters. To book your Missouri duck hunt, visit ducksandbucksoutfitters.com and tell them Melissa sent you. This segment was brought to you by Boss Buck. For the most user-friendly and dependable feeder on the market, choose Boss Buck Feeders. Now you're getting serious. Winchester Deadly Passion is presented by Cutting Back Digital. More deer, fewer blanks. Hard hitting Easton Arrows. Hunter Safety System. Winchester Repeating Arms. Analogics. Protect your deer herd with the power of science. Scent Killer Goal with Hunt Dry Technology. Apply it, dry it, and go hunt. Rage Broadheads, leading the evolution in lethal technology. Sportsman's Alliance, protecting hunting from coast to coast. Engel Coolers, the original high-performance cooler company. And Golden Triangle Whitetail, your hunt of a lifetime awaits. 
After a couple days of incredible duck hunting in Missouri, Melissa reverts back to her comfort zone and shows how putting in your time scouting during the preseason can pay dividends when the season finally opens. One of the things that makes Illinois so productive for big whitetails is the management. There is really a great level of people watching out and understanding what a mature deer is and waiting for these bucks to grow up. Now sure, you can have the genetics, you can have the big bucks, but if you don't let them grow up, you'll never reach that full potential. So by managing an area and having a big enough track of land to manage, well you'll find out that you can produce some giants. Now for me, deer hunting, it's almost like a year-round sport. You're able to get out there in that January, February, March, checking for sheds, looking at the farms, watching where the deer are moving. The next thing, food plots. Tons of food plots will get planted, almost 300 acres of them. But this is key in managing a deer herd. That way, they've got plenty of food and they'll never need to leave the property. And lastly, well, those tree stands. They need to be moved, tweaked, looked at, and really, the deer sometimes will change patterns too. So the more you can get out there, check to see what the deer are doing, and move your stands accordingly, the better your fall will be. The first setup I decided to try was a field that overlooked both corn, beans, kind of a mixture of everything. Sometimes it's really tough to get these food plots to grow because the deer eat them so quickly. So this time, we decided to provide a smorgasbord. Sitting on stand, it wasn't long, and a big, nice buck came up. The problem, it wasn't super old. It was a beautiful buck with lots of points, but a little bit thin, all the genetics there, but just a little bit young. I knew that if I let this one walk, by next year, he could be a giant. And I'm all about trying to get these deer to their full potential. Let them grow up as big as they can, and then harvest them. That is the ultimate key to getting giant bucks on your property. Maybe I'm becoming more of a watcher than a hunter. I don't care where you're at. To see this many bucks, that's amazing. There's no question, the cold makes it a lot easier to find some of the big bucks. They don't just always show themselves, but these guys are hungry, and we've got all the food for them. Tip of the week is brought to you by Field & Stream. Trusted brands, timeless traditions. Anything that you wear into the whitetail woods, whether it's war for hunting or for scouting, should really be thoroughly washed in scent killer gold laundry detergent. You want to have your clothing as scent free as possible. This laundry detergent is formulated with ultra concentrated odor fighting power. You can wash twice as many loads per ounce compared to regular scent killer liquid clothing wash. And it's a special high efficiency formula that fights odors, dirts, and stains in your hunting clothing without adding the fragrance or UV brighteners. We recommend that you wash a load of your everyday laundry in the washer with scent killer gold laundry detergent before washing your hunting clothes. It works great for everyday clothing as well, and this will help remove any perfume odors left behind from your commercial detergent that you normally use. Once you remove your everyday clothes, it's time to wash your hunting clothes. Wash everything that you'll be wearing, even the clothes that you'll be changing out of in the field. This way you won't be adding scent to your freshly showered body, and when you put on these traveling clothes, always be sure to follow the clothing manufacturer care instructions. After washing, it's recommended whenever possible to hang dry your clothes outdoors. Sometimes this isn't an option, and in such cases we recommend using your home dryer. However, your dryer should be conditioned as well before using it to dry your hunting clothes. First, you want to clean the lint trap of all the lint. Next, dry a load of everyday clothes that have been washed in scent killer gold laundry detergent. This will get the dryer ready for your hunting clothes. After removing the load, clean the lint trap one final time. 
The dryer is now all ready for your hunting clothes. Once your clothes are fully dry, store them in a scent-free container until you're ready for the hunt and you'll be all ready to go. Winchester Deadly Passion is presented by Winchester, the American legend. Matthews Archery, catch us if you can. Field and Stream, where traditions begin. ScoutLookWeather.com, download the free Deer Log app for your smartphone. Reinhardt, the best archery targets in the world. Sure Shot Jewelry, check out the Melissa Bachman collection today. And Boss Buck, for the most user-friendly and dependable feeder on the market. Now you're getting serious. Closed captioning is brought to you by Cuddyback Digital. Upgrade to Cuddyback and your images will never look better. After sitting on the first stand location and seeing what came out that evening, I decided I was in for a change. I had set so many different places up that it was hard to stay in one location, so I decided to head to another field and sit on a U-shaped turnip field with mixed with buck forage oats. Now this place has produced giant bucks. You're not always going to see the number of deer you'll see on other places, but when you see bucks, usually they're a whopper. Once three o'clock or so came, deer started coming onto the field. In fact, I had several does come out and bed right in the middle of the food plot. Talk about a perfect decoy setup. And then I saw a buck. I'm watching this guy coming through the back just like the bigger bucks do. They don't always walk right out onto the field if they want to maybe scent check the does or just see what's going on. They'll usually stay in cover without exposing themselves. And that's exactly what this guy did. He was just inching along the sides, watching the deer, and I looked at him and he was nice. Very nice, big rack, but no brows. Now this wasn't quite the buck I was looking for, but it definitely got my spirits up knowing that the bucks were probably on their feet and I had all the decoys needed right in my field. <sighs> I don't know, might be making a big mistake here, but if I am, I'll go home without a tag and guess I don't get any venison this year. As the sun started setting, I looked over and I saw a buck right in the field. That was so cool. Wow, not only is this an absolute beautiful buck, I filmed the whole hunt myself. This is not one you pass. This guy came into turnips about 10 minutes from dark and he's just got all points. This is what deer hunting's all about, waiting for the buck you've been looking for. Something like this, no one in their right mind could pass this guy. He's coming home in my truck. Well, this big boy was definitely worth the wait. Scoring 174 inches, this buck was a true trophy. And the thing is, I had just a wonderful hunt all the way leading up to it. I saw a ton of great bucks. Even if I didn't end up with a deer, I would have been happy. But a buck like this? Well, now my answer is simple when people ask where my favorite whitetail hunting destination in the country is. Golden Triangle Whitetails in West Central Illinois. Can you blame me? At this one place, I've been lucky enough to take a 202 inch buck with my bow after a pack of coyotes chased an entire field of deer to me. A 174 inch whitetail with my muzzleloader on this late season hunt, a 164 with my shotgun 
after I filmed them for nearly nine minutes earlier in the season, just outside of bow range, and a couple other beautiful bucks along the way as well. This is proof that if you're willing to put in the time scouting, hunting, planting food plots, and you find quality hunting lands, the sky's the limit when it comes to big bucks in Illinois. This episode, Melissa was hunting with Mike Pavlik of Golden Triangle Whitetail. To book your Illinois whitetail hunt, visit goldentrianglewhitetail.com and see why Melissa returns year after year. Follow Melissa on Twitter at Melissa Bachman, on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Winchester Deadly Passion, and Instagram at Melissa underscore Bachman for behind the scenes footage, photos, giveaways, and much more. <laughs>